Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and this is Joe Boric, or we like to call him Pro Joe, Professor Joe Boric. And uh, we're going to do a little series because it's uh, we, we're doing the team series, as everybody knows. Everybody in the land knows that about free agency and all that. We're starting to run out of teams already, and we don't even know when the NHL season's going to start. So we're taking a little break, and we're going to do some spitball in here. We're going to kind of talk about next year's free agent class and if they'll sign or when will happen, how much they'll sign for, all of those sort of things like that. Kind of fun. We decided to do it mostly because we just end up talking about hockey, and then that came up, and we thought, hey, let's record it. So that's what we're going to do. Thanks for tuning in, by the way, and I hope you all got your uh, Pearls of Wisdom necklaces for subscribing uh, to the channel. And for those of you who haven't, I don't know why, I don't know who, have, everybody in the land is subscribed by now, I imagine. Apparently, there's only 528 people in the land, but <laughs> so <laughs> hit the subscribe and the bell if you could. That would be great. It really helps out a lot. As, uh, what's his name? As John likes to say, <coughs> helps out a lot. You can just go ahead and do that. That would be great. Let's go look at next year's free agent class and as far as defensemen goes concern. And Joe, by the way, how is the Philadelphia area and all the things going on around it there? Uh, it's solid. It's solid. Uh, it's overcast after it rained yesterday. It's gotten cooler. It's in more of the 40s uh, today, but it's still a pretty solid day out. Um, a good day to definitely play uh, hockey or outside, uh, which I might potentially do later, but we'll see. Cool. As you can tell, in my Seattle apartment, it's, again, cloudy and overcast. Okay, let's As get... Always, yeah. <laughs> As always. As always. True to reality. Uh, all right. So we start off, we're going, we're bringing up the, I, I use sport track for my free agent uh, queries. You can use whatever one you prefer, but we, I use sport track here at NHL Pearls of Wisdom Industries. Top of the list, we have um, Alexander Edler at 35 years old for the Vancouver Canucks, had, has had a stellar career so far. Uh, and, uh, is up for free agency next year. What do you think would happen? Could is likely to happen with Alexander Edler next year, Joe? Um, I think if he doesn't stay in Vancouver, he's likely to stay in um hit that general like probably he's likely to stay in Canada or that area because I don't think you're gonna relocate at that point of a career to say play in Nashville like even if they're forming a good team like you might not want to move that far at this point so I feel like it's either Vancouver or probably one of the other Canadian teams um so maybe he can um still keep whatever place he has now or whatever and I don't know how his family situation is but if he has a family with kids or whatever also keep that situation intact and just go play somewhere that's only a couple cities over because you I, I don't but um if he's okay with moving there's a lot of people that would um a defenseman like his caliber that's had a very good career a very good veteran that you know what you're getting day in and day out from Alexander Edler there's uh no if ands or buts about that he had a good season last year he's still putting together good seasons and uh it's not like Alexander Edler's also slow as heck out there or anything. So he's still, for his age, can move a bit. So it's not like he's a slow poke out there. And 25 points um, for a guy his age is pretty good after he had 31. Um, or not, excuse me, a 33 points for a guy his age. I was looking uh, down at the wrong year. 33 points for a guy his age is very good when he had 34. Actually very consistent. He's been very consistent, actually, the last three years of his age, 34, 34, and 33 points at this point of your career. So anybody would take a player of his caliber. It's just do you want to, how far do you want to go at the age of uh, 36, I think he would be at that point. So, Yeah, um, yeah, he'll be 36. But like you said, consistency has always been the game with Alexander Edler. 
I personally have a feeling that he'll take a haircut. It's going to be about cap space, cap space, cap space, right? And they would want to keep other to for him to end his career there, I imagine. Uh, probably, maybe even if he wants to give him a job somewhere in the organization and stuff like that. Um, maybe if he wants to keep on playing and they can't find the cap space for him, maybe he calls up, his, gets his agent to call up the Seattle representatives and see if they can uh, play just across the pond there for a while. But my thinking is, my feeling is, is Alex has been pretty bullish about staying in Vancouver. Um, <clears throat> he's really pushed the envelope on that his whole career. I think he takes a haircut to whatever they need to stay there in Vancouver. I'm going to skip the next one because we, that's going to be a long conversation. Uh, we'll do a quick uh, uh, Mark Stahl questionable whether he will even continue playing after next year after all the abuse he's taken we'll see what he how he does in detroit i know for the rangers every year he was declining quite a bit right uh yeah yeah he was definitely going down quite a bit each year in new york uh he's going to be in a situation where they're giving guys chances uh stevie wise having a team of a bunch of guys that um he wants to put in a good situation to give them chances just to like Bobby Ryan, Mark Stoll, get their career going on the right path again. Right. Um, if they, and uh, maybe then trade them for some assets. So uh, we'll see where he's at. If he has a solid year, he'll get picked up as a six, seven. Maybe. But uh, he's so. probably not much more of a uh, six, seven. Uh, so, but he's a defenseman. That he'll get picked up if he has a solid year because of the experience he brings as well. So. Yeah, I know Mark the Stall. I don't know them, but I'm aware that the Stall family are very family oriented. My thinking is that he'll take one year contracts in Detroit. I doubt he'll ever he'll move around too much. Uh, maybe at the trade deadline, uh, one last gasp but getting a cup, possibly if he thinks it's his last year. That's about all I'll get there. I'm going to combine the next two because they're both from Arizona. Actually, Arizona next year loses almost their whole decor to free agency, which is good for them because they can retool that whole team and that general manager gets a chance to put his own stamp on it. But Goligoski and Jalmerson. Goligoski at 36 Jalmerson at 34. Do you see any value one more year from these guys? Yeah. Yeah, John, well, Jalmerson, I think, will have a couple more years, at least until the 36 age at Goligoski's. Uh, and I don't see him just falling off. I mean, in Arizona, it's tough to keep your stats absolutely um, brilliant because of the system they play, which is, allow a bunch of shots basically from the outside and just try to keep guys to the outside. So th like he's still doing good. Everyone talks about how great of experienced guys also cups in the room in terms of Jomerson. And, and uh, you got, I mean, these two guys have the experience for days. Um, and when you still produce at a level that they're able to with that experience, I think they'll get contracts. I think it will likely be, one years at this point, but Goligoski's still around a 30 point producer at the age of an offenseman. He got 32 uh, last year. Um, so I think he's definitely there. And I think Jomerson <clears throat> is at this point of his their careers a notch above because he can play more minutes still and also do the same types of things Goligoski does. Will probably be the guy if I'm ranking Arizona defenseman. He would be the top guy on my list to get from them. Then it would go Goligoski. And then third would obviously go Jason Demers, who is the other um, Arizona defenseman in the free agency here, who's more of a third-line uh, defenseman at this point of his career where Goligoski and Jomerson can play on your second defensive line, yeah. potentially. Because yeah. I still like Jomerson, and we and he and he didn't even have a season this year. We have to remember. And when you're at the age he's at, actually having that year, like only playing 27 games and not having a full season, might be a blessing in disguise because you got a full, like basically full grueling season off your leg. So I think that might be more beneficial than harmful. 
That's a good point. Jalmerson also plays like a beast. Like he is fearless and he's taken a lot yeah, he of damage. He plays like a bat out of hell. Yeah. He's taken a lot of damage. I mean, those years when he played in Chicago and won cups, I mean, he was insane, that guy. Uh, also, Goligoski, very underrated. I remember when Shaka made those moves, I actually liked it. The problem was. The system that Rick Tockett, and I'm not against Rick Tockett, he had no offense. The system that was put in there goes against what these guys are good at. They're possession players, like you said. Yeah. Uh, caving into your goaltender and all of those things is very... I really doubt very much either one of these guys will re-sign in Arizona for that reason. Thank they're going to want to. They're going to want to go to possession teams to show to play again what they were made to play like. So yeah, that's, those are very good points, uh, Joe. I, I totally I agree with a lot of them that you said. Um, next, we'll go. Um, you mentioned Jason Demers again. Given the opportunity, I before I kind of slammed Demers before this video started. But maybe given the opportunity again to play the way Demir's best strengths are, which again is possession and moving the puck out of the zone mm -hmm. on another team, he can have more value for another team. We have Ryan Murray now, who has struggled with injuries his whole career. Can this guy finally have a healthy season? Uh, that's really what it comes down to here, right? Yeah, yeah. Ryan Murray has skill, and even when he's on the ice, uh, because of his injuries, he's kind of just shown up to be a guy that looks pretty solid uh, in the defensive zone and produces pretty well when he's able to stay on the ice for a continuous time. In the inner stats, like for example, in 2018, in 56 games, he had a plus 20 and 29 points with 28 assists. That's a pretty decent output. Uh, so if you figure he was able to play in the 70 games there, he probably would have had around a 40-point season. Potentially. So, like, if he's a guy that's able to stay healthy, he's going to be able to get to much better outputs than just 25 like he had in 15 and 29 like he had two years ago. But continuing to only be able to play around 40-something, obviously he played 27 games last year. That's not good, but he's coming back after having – Similar to Jomerson, but this guy's had a lot more injuries, obviously, Murray. He's come back off of a season he didn't really play much, so his legs are going to be pretty rested. Maybe in New Jersey, that's in a lineup that's supposed to be beneficial. Lindy Ruff system, like we talked about in past videos, for defensemen. Maybe he'll be able to kind of jive and get going again there, and that'll set his market value in a good spot. And then it'll kind of come to his decision of, do I want to bank on that market value? Or do I want to stay in a situation that seems good for me at the at that point? So I, I think he'd be wise to stay in a decision that's good for him if he can stay healthy. Now the problem I heard it, I wish I would have wrote down where I got this from, but the words I hear about Ryan Murray and his injuries, the word that comes up has come up several times is the word chronic. It's it's a chronic injury problem, whatever this is, and they don't think it's ever going to stop. But we'll see. I'm not a doctor, and I'm rooting for you, Ryan, because, I mean, he's uh, he definitely came into the league with a lot of high hopes. He When he plays, and he plays at his best, he's a good, solid two-way defenseman that can play in your 3-4. Four, four. So hopefully, hopefully, Ryan, you can stay healthy. It'll be, I know you're listening. Of course, everybody knows that, Ryan listening to the fine programming here. So there you go, Ryan. That's for you. So we'll go now to – there's a couple more guys we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about three more. Um, we'll kind of talk to them about them all because you know what? They're kind of the similar type players. Uh, David Savard, again, in the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, Adam Larson in the, for the Edmonton Oilers. And Alec Martinez with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, oh, geez, we got to talk about Tyson Berry, too. Uh, Tyson Berry. Let's talk about Tyson Berry first. Tyson Berry in Edmonton goes there, uh, to me, obviously, to pad his stats for a better contract. I don't know if you can go to a better place to pad your stats when you're passing the, the likes of Drysettle and McDavid out of the zone. 
How do you think Tyson Berry is going to suit up, and and, and how's how's this going to work out for him in Edmonton? And do you th- do you see him boosting up his value there? Yeah, uh, big time. Because if you remember in Colorado, he had high fifty point seasons, and you know the forward <clears throat> core they have there. So uh, in Edmonton, he's going to have McDavid, Drysaddle, uh, Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto. And so on and so forth. Uh, Pujarvi, who seems like he's mature again, coming back over from overseas. Uh, so he's got a good group to pass it up the ice. I think he's at least in the mid to high 40 points this year, if not back towards those 50. Because in what people considered a very awful year, he still almost got 40 points. Yeah, I was so, going to say, a lot I mean, of people like, talk like, about yeah. that. But in Toronto, he came uh, the second half, he came around not too bad in the offensive side of things right um yeah it's just his defense was so bad last year that people call it an awful season but i mean his awful season i would kind of take in most cases compared to some other people i've seen have absolutely <clears throat> brandon manning uh but awful seasons um <laughs> wow. so i think uh <laughs> yeah. i think um tyson barry is actually a good defenseman i do think he's a defenseman that now realizes he's supposed to be in the West with the more quick, efficient, they have more skill with it. East still has teams that are more sometimes built around heaviness still, where Burry doesn't play in that type of system better. So I think he's going to stay in the West. If he does work out at Edmonton, though, even if he could only get, say, five-something to six at most compared to maybe wanting seven to seven-five if he has a really good year, he should take it because he should take a situation that he's really working out in because that's what he was in before he wanted to uh, leave and move on from Colorado. He was in a good situation with good forwards to pass the puck up the ice there. And uh, maybe it's not even out of the realm of possibility of a reunion there since we see Colorado adding. They don't care if they don't necessarily need the position, if they think it'll help them in some aspect. They tend to add people. They didn't need Devontae's, and they added him. So that that could be a possibility because they seem to like adding a veteran defenseman each offseason. Um, so, yeah, I think he's going to be a good commodity to pick up, but that's if Edmonton doesn't keep him. Because I think if he has a 45- to 50-point season, they're going to try it with all their might to keep him around. So. Yeah, um, he kind of reminds me, Holland likes those types of players. He brought Green over to Detroit. Uh, and uh, so I think it's very likely that he, he could end up staying there as well. If he does, let's go back up to those three that I talked about. You also Dude, forgot Cole, another Colorado, a former oh, Colorado. Yeah, defense. Ian Cole. Ian Cole uh, is probably <clears throat> not, is not going to be going back to Colorado next year. they got too many young players knocking on the door. He'll find a home somewhere at 32 years old. Ian Cole is at... Is one of those do everything type guys that will be in the league and everybody will forget that he's there. He's going to be one of those guys, you know, when they talk about, do you remember this guy? You know, they do those. Yeah. John, John, well, does, actually, John does those pod, does mm-hmm. those on his YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does a really good job off the wall hockey. Check it out. Those do you remember the guys things? That's absolutely awesome. You're right. But yeah, he's a good defenseman. Uh, two years ago, he had almost 180 blocks. Last year, he was in the 120s, and he was a very good on both sides. Limited role, excuse me. He still had 26 points yeah. and a plus 21, so he was efficient on the ice. Um, and he, he, and never, he brings the pain, too. He brings the yeah, pain. Exactly. So I think he's a guy. He's going to go to a team, I think, that needs, again, that experience that's been in some uh, – he's never um, – been on a team, I don't think that was he on Pittsburgh when they won the cup. Uh, actually, I think he was. Yeah, I think he did. Win. Okay, then he was on a team that did win the cup, so that's even better. I was going to say he at least has winning experience on Pittsburgh, um, Columbus, and Colorado in terms of winning. But I don't know about winning the cup. But he did win the cup. I think you're right. So he brings that winning pedigree. <clears throat> so a young defense, like even Philly, for example might have interest in a one-year, two-year deal for a guy like Ian Cole because you got a lot of youngsters, and he's a guy that kind of does it all, similar to Matt Niskanen. He would be a guy that if you could trade for now would actually be good for Philly to pick up to try to replace a Niskanen-type S player because a Gustafsson doesn't do that. 
but Ian, Ian Cole won't be without a team for quite a few years, no. wherever he decides to play. There's so many teams that all do we that, so, that would take a lot. You could you could go down the line, you could go down the list of teams, and probably half the league could use an Ian Cole. You know, it's just he's a good guy. Which brings me again to Adam Larson. Uh, Adam Larson, now I get to see him more than a lot of people do. Um, I like Ian, I actually think Ian Cole is a better defenseman than Adam Larson. A lot of people don't agree with me there. I think Ian Cole moves the puck out a little better. The one thing I do love about Adam Larson, is, and maybe better than Ian Cole, and maybe just about anybody in the league, just about. Uh, Bo Meester was really good at this too. Well, not anybody in the league. Hedberg. No, like I'm talking about like within reason. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Larson is a great at getting the puck off people's sticks. The question is, are they going is are, are is Edmonton gonna pony up even the same amount of money he's making right now, which I do believe is about four million a year, to yeah, to keep Adam Larson next year. I find it highly unlikely. Yeah, uh, he's one of those guys. Tough. Yeah, you're exactly right. Tough along the boards. Uh, he can hit you. He, he's not a bad defense. He's a pretty good guy to have. He's a more of a stay at home guy. Obviously, his biggest total I think was a twenty point season, uh, if I'm no. not wrong. Um, he's but not. He's not. He's, he's not very good at not, getting out of the zone. No, but if you've got but, a guy there that can good. Yeah, him. exactly. Good defensive defenseman. So, like for example, a a guy that's like an offensive defenseman like the ghosts of the world, even uh, Tyson Barry, if they go righty-righty, he wouldn't be the worst guy to pair because you're going to want a guy – he's a guy that might jump on the rush. So you're going to want another guy that stays back. So he's one of those guys, if you have a more offensive system that's lacking that defensive guy, he would be a good guy to pick up because now you have your guy that can stay back. And you're not going to have all that rush, rush, rush because you have two defensemen that are attacking. Sure. And he co- he covers a lot of area in the defensive zone. He's very hard to get yeah. around. He's Yo, very hard to score correct. against. No yeah. doubt about that. It's just get it off the stick soon. Mm-hmm. Have somebody there because he's not very good. At, he's going to just basically chuck it down the ice, which gives up possession and isn't the best thing. Unfortunately, they had to trade t- Taylor Hall for him. And that, exactly. <laughs> let's not get too far that's into that. Say. That's why he gets trashed the most because of the trade. He's not yeah. a bad defenseman. It's because of the move that was. Yeah, really it's fun. too bad for him, really, because he's he's yeah. he's, exactly. he's had a fairly solid career. Uh, let's go to again now to uh, David yeah. Savard in uh, Columbus. It's possible they could be in a situation where they have a very difficult time signing David, as much as I think they would like to. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? I thought I think that just lagged. Yeah, I'm uh, just saying. Yeah, David, David Savard's another underrated defenseman. Yeah, he's another really underrated guy. Uh, I mean, when you're in a defense core and a team with torts, a, a team that really schemes your defense well, that might happen. Similar to Carolina, they got a guy like Jacob Slavin who would become underrated because they have a system with Brindamore that schemes their defense very well. Um. So sometimes that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately, being on those very good coach defensive teams. Um, that Devon Proveroff, also underrated, uh, who wasn't even always on good coach defensive teams, uh, Dave Haxtell. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a guy, another guy that kind of does a little bit of it all because he's had the mid-20 points at least uh, four or five times in his career in that 130-something point season. So if he needs to provide offense because of some injuries, he can do so when needed, more so uh, obviously in the assist department than the uh, goal-scoring department. But he can move the puck up the ice. He's obviously a great stay-at-home guy. He's going to be a guy that anyone's going to want. I just don't think he's going to go to the market. I think he might be the guy most likely to get re-signed because with the moves of Columbus getting rid of some of the defensemen this year already, I think they're going to want him around and do all they can to keep the guys that they still have. So yeah. they have a young guy named Peak who's coming up and they've got a couple other guys. It's gonna depend on their progression, I think. He's 30 years old. The thing is, if a team comes in, I have a feeling he's gonna go it'll uh, it's very hard. It depends on what David wants. 
if he wants to stay with his family, he's not going to go for the five-year, $6 million contract or something like that, then he probably stays in Columbus. If he's going to go for that six-year contract, eh, I'm not sure if Columbus is going to be able to do something like That's that. That's true. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be very difficult to decide whether he is. But the thing is, if he does go on the market, you're, I'm totally with you on that. He, there's going to be a lineup of teams. He is such an underrated defenseman. Analytically, uh, he, he, he's, he's very physical. He, he, he's resilient. He, I think he's played most of the games that he could play. He's very seldom injured. He's reliable great solid defenseman that doesn't get talked about anywhere near enough mostly because he plays i could see a team like toronto if they could find the cap space going after a guy like david savard or something like that quite a bit um finally i'm going to go with alec martinez i was going to get into jake mckay but we're getting a little long i'd like to really talk about alec martinez another one of those late blooming guys that was a great move for vegas and i don't think they're going to be able to sign him after signing Peter Angelo. What can this guy bring to your team at 34 years old? I don't see anything. The thing about Alec Martinez to me is he doesn't look like he's slowing down. No, uh, and when you're a late bloomer, usually uh, you have more longevity then because you haven't been in, you haven't been playing the boy minutes in the league uh, until you actually have shown that the ability to do so. So he's been having in LA his final couple seasons in LA. And now obviously his first season in Vegas, he had a good year, but I think he likely will only have a good two year career in Vegas just because of their cap situation. And they have defensemen <clears throat> that are coming up the pipe. So uh, they might just move on at that point from a guy that's 34, but he's going to get an opportunity. I mean, uh, he's a guy that, also can provide offense when needed, but is a good overall defenseman, um, kind of does whatever's asked of him uh, by the coach for whatever particular system uh, he's in, because he got a 38, 31, and in the 20s quite a few times points uh, in uh, L.A. Um, because it was asked of him more, where in Vegas they wanted him to be more uh, defensive because uh, of the lineup they have. They already have guys that are very good in the offensive zone, like Shea Theodore, who's one of the best in the game. That uh, being so, said, in the regular season, he got eight points in ten games. I didn't even know that for Vegas. But in the playoffs, oh, yeah. he played a much more defensive role in the playoffs. But he did get eight points in ten games in the regular season. I, I, didn't, I didn't notice that. He got just as many points in Vegas as he did in 41 games in L.A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he didn't do as good in L.A., and then he really started doing good in Vegas when he got moved. Yeah, you're right. His worst year in L.A. was the year he got moved uh, last season. But, yeah, he's a guy that's going to be able to provide a lot of spark and uh, experience and a good guy. Again, that will probably go to a team that needs that veteran defenseman that has uh, winning uh, experience. And he was on L.A., of course, when they won. So he ha he's another guy. Uh, that's been on L.A. from 09 to 18. So he won a, some cups. So, I mean, you bring, you bring like you always say, bring a cup in the room uh, is a lot of an added bonus, and that's exactly what Alec Martinez does as well on top of his skill. So. Yeah, um, I will mention Jake McCabe. I like the guy a lot, and I do believe he will be re-signed by the Buffalo Sabres. Same so here. I don't want to talk too much about that, but I did want to mention him because – I think he is lost on that defense. He's been one of their better defensemen for quite some time, and nobody really notices it because the overall D has been so bad that McCabe gets lost. I just wanted to mention that. Can you believe we did this for 30 minutes, dude? And I can assure you guys that we've probably been talking about this for an hour. So I hope you enjoy this fine program. And I'll tell you, this programming is for people that are hockey nuts like us. We're geeks. We talk about hockey all the time. If we could make it so there was nothing else in the world but hockey, it would be done. I promise you. It's the way the world is supposed to be as far as I'm concerned. Thank you all for tuning in, especially Ryan Murray. And I'm sorry I talked poorly about you. But uh, uh, we I hope you hit the subscribe. We're going to be going on about the centers next next programming. So, what are these uh, centers? Okay. 
Yeah, I we'll might want to put Dougie Hamilton into the conversation. Oh, we didn't even talk about Dougie Hamilton. Yeah, oh we didn't even gosh. fit him. Into the most video. important defenseman <laughs> in the whole thing. We didn't even bring it up. Okay, we're going to, you know what? Now, we're, before we do centers, we're just going to do a video on Dougie Hamilton. That's it. Because I bet you there's a good 15, 20 minutes just on Dougie Hamilton right there. That's why they yeah. want to bring it up. Didn't even, everybody's like, are you going to talk about Dougie Hamilton? How about now? How about now? How about now? How about now? <laughs> so we're going to do one just for Dougie Hamilton next. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Lots of love to you. Uh, SteelFlyers.com. Got to say it. SteelFlyers. Yep. Go check it out. Right now. Okay, bye.